early this morning, without warning or excuse, Hitler added another to the horrible crimes which already disgrace his name by a sudden attack on Holland, Belgium and Luxembourg. In all history, no other man has been responsible for such a hideous total of human suffering and misery as he. He has chosen a moment when perhaps it seemed to him that this country was entangled in the throes of a political crisis and when he might find it divided against itself. If he has counted on our internal divisions to help him, he has miscalculated the mind of this people. I am not now going to make any comment upon the debate in the House of Commons which took place on Tuesday and Wednesday last. But when it was over, I had no doubt in my mind that some new and drastic action must be taken if confidence was to be restored to the House of Commons and the war carried on with the vigor and energy which are essential to victory. What was that action to be? It was clear that at this critical moment in the war, what was needed was the formation of a government which would include members of the Labour and Liberal oppositions and thus present a united front to the enemy. What had to be ascertained was the conditions which would be necessary to enable such a united government to be formed. And to this question, I devoted myself with the assistance of some of my colleagues yesterday afternoon. By the afternoon of today, it was apparent that the essential unity could be secured under another Prime Minister, though not under myself. In those circumstances, my duty was plain. I sought an audience of the King this evening and tendered to him my resignation, which His Majesty has been pleased to accept. His Majesty has now entrusted to my friend and colleague, Mr. Winston Churchill, the task of forming a new administration on a national basis. And in this task, I have no doubt he will be successful. For that purpose, my other colleagues in the government have intimated to me that they will place their resignations in Mr. Churchill's hands. But they will, of course, retain their present offices pending the appointment of the new government. I should perhaps say to you that Mr. Churchill has expressed to me his strong desire that I should be a member of the War Cabinet. And I have told him that I will gladly give him any assistance that I can in that capacity. Now, as this is my last message to you from Number 10 Downing Street, there are one or two things I should like to say to you. During the period, it's almost exactly three years, that I have been Prime Minister, I have borne a heavy load of anxiety and responsibility. As long as I believed there was any chance of preserving peace honorably, I strove to take it. When the last hope vanished and war could no longer be avoided, I strove equally hard to wage it with all my might. Perhaps you remember that in my broadcast of September the 3rd last year, I told you that we should be fighting against evil things. My words have proved to be insufficient to describe the vileness of those who have now staked everything on the great battle just beginning. Perhaps it may at least be some relief to know that this battle though it may last for days or even weeks, has ended the period of waiting and uncertainty. 
For the hour has come when we are to be put to the test, as the innocent people of Holland and Belgium and France are being tested already. And you and I must rally behind our new leader, and with our united strength, and with unshakable courage, fight and work until this wild beast that has sprung out of his lair upon us be finally disarmed and overthrown. <laughs>